What's up, Kerbal Knots? This is Noel on PC, and today we're playing some KSP. I had, for a long time, attempted to build something on the scale of the Antonov AN-225. I think I said that right. The Mira? The Myra? Dream, I think it means? Anyways, so this is something that I've, I've tried a lot over the years. I've never succeeded in it because it's just always so difficult to get the sort of weight to thrust to lift ratio. They, all of those things have to come into play really well when you're doing giant crafts. So I've never actually been able to do this. I thought I'd take a try at it and someone, at, ironically at the same time, one of you commented that I should take on this craft and I knew I had it sitting there as a save file as the haul. The wings were a little different. I pulled these wings off the A380 that we did recently just because they're bigger and they have more lift. And I thought, with the new engines and this new wing configuration, I could probably do this. And not only did we do it, but I thought, why not throw a shuttle on the top too? <laughs> why not? Uh, so yeah, I've, I've tested the bottom portion and it flew in a straight line. You know, it got up off the runway fine, it climbed, to cut up to like 10,000 feet and leveled it off, flew great. I haven't flown it yet with the shuttle on top, so I don't know what's going to happen, but I made sure to put it in a position that didn't change the the thrust, lift, weight, etc. balance. So it should fly the same, just heavier. It should. So I've, I've increased the thrust to full 100% on all the motors. That should help us get off the ground. And I've ballasted I ballasted the front and the back with a little bit of weight so it should stay nice and true during turns. This should fly great. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's crash this fucker. Who do we got in here? Who's flying this? Commander Stonesy. I don't think this is his first mission. Simbaz and Jaggy. It's not their first missions either. Might be Jag it might be one of Jaggy's first missions on recording, though. These guys have a lot of notches under their belt, because I usually do a lot of stupid shit in the interim between videos. Even though I'm not recording, I'm still playing. And occasionally, you know, I'll do like a test run, so to speak, that grows, goes great, and I get all the way back down to Kerbin, so I might as well uh, recover the vessel, etc., and log, you know, the successful mission into his... the Kerbal's little save file. So... Yeah, I do a lot of gameplay outside of recording. I'm going to try and start streaming that stuff. Um, some of you will occasionally subscribe here on YouTube and immediately just Twitter, Twitch, etc. and hit me with all of them. So if you watch Twitch TV, go follow me on Twitch TV. Go dig me up. I've got the same username. It'll be easy to find me because uh, I am streaming some KSP on Twitch TV. And that's where you're going to see a lot of the interim in between. Let's rotate. Rotating. We're clear. Putting up the landing gear. Oh my god, it flies. Haha, <laughs> that's fucking awesome. This thing is so ridiculously large. It's so big. And with the fuel weight. Like, we're carrying... <laughs> we're carrying... 13... 14, just a hair over 15,000 units of fuel. Even at full throttle with three engines, we're still barely creating any lift and speed. Yeah, these things are blaring hard at like 260 kilonewtons apiece. That's about 1,500 the whole way around. I should almost turn <laughs> those engines on just to help. Um, will it turn? That's the big thing with a lot of these giant crafts, is as soon as you start to try and roll, uh, it starts to lose the center. It'll just, it, you'll see, it's bound to happen. All right, let's, where are we going to go? We're going to go that way. Let's go, let's go out towards Hawaii, and then we're going to loop back around and try and put it down. Let's see, will it turn? Oh, it turns pretty well. It turns better with the space shuttle on top. I think the space shuttle is actually helping keep it true. It's sort of keeping it going towards prograde a little bit. Almost like the fins on a dart. It's just added a bunch more fin. 
Oh, that's very cool. I am definitely going to upload this to Dropbox. So the download link for this is going to be in the, in the description. But before you run off and go download that, this nose is part of Space Y. I think it's called Spacey. It's a pack that comes with a bunch of boosters, uh, another gauge of liquid fuel. It's a it's a it's a a DLC mod thing that I highly recommend because it works so well. It's really nice. It comes with a cool set of decouplers, a bunch of tanks, a bunch of engines. It's a must-have, and it works in 1.1. So you're going to need that to fly this, because I tried it with, um, I took this off and I put on, uh, what's it called? A fairing. Like I put a big shroud over the top, and that seemed to, uh, like, it looked better than this. It looked a little more appropriate. You could make you could make it a little pointier, sort of like the, the actual uh, AN-225. But the way that the fairings and aerodynamics work is it didn't fly nearly as well as when I replaced to this nose. And with this nose, I was able to ballast the weight on the front and back better. Because originally, of course, I had this tank and these tanks, oh, this tank, and that tank empty. I had these tank, that, this big tank, and this big tank completely empty. Didn't fly. The back end would just go left or right, and it would just go into a death spin every single time. So it was too light for the amount of size and uh, thrust it had. So it didn't fly right. So I ballasted weight in the front and the back, solved the problem. So if you have a craft that will fly straight, perfect, but as soon as you try and roll or do any kind of a turn, then it'll just go into a death spin. Try just throwing some tanks, even if you have to, even if you have to clip them into the, into the craft, because you're just trying to just ballast some weight. You're not trying to create extra fuel. You can even close them, like set them to in the off position so the fuel never gets used. So it's not technically cheating. You're just ballasting weights. It'd be like if you were in a 747 and you just pulled up the floorboards and put a bunch of lead weight in there. It's not... It's not, it's not cheating, it's just ballasting. So I'm, I'm all against clipping if it's gonna like cheat and help you, but I'm all for clipping if it's just to sort of fix something that we shouldn't have to be fixing. We're gonna start a really slow turn and start heading back towards Cape Curb Navarro. I have no idea how this thing's going to land because in my test I basically just came out to about here and then reverted and decided to throw the space shuttle on top. Oh. Got a little haywire there. If you watched the nav ball, we started walking to the right of the nav ball while we were trying to sweep the nose up. It started wanting to go skyward. Oh, this is so nerve-wracking. If you're not a really good pilot, I would not recommend downloading this and thinking you're going to be able to fly it. If you log a lot of hours flying and you know sort of how to operate the nav ball and you know how to work all six of the keys, you know, and multiples at a time, fly this thing. It's it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool. But if you're like a total noob, you don't really know what you're doing, you're gonna crash this thing a lot, so just don't don't even bother. Download it if you want to just look at it. Alright, this has been a pretty good turn so far. Pretty clean. Pretty clean. You probably wouldn't want to turn this sharp in the real AN-225 with the shuttle on the top. I know that the shuttle carrier had a name, that like attachment system, and it's like two big things on the top, those big dicks that stick up. I couldn't I couldn't really get the 
the, the sticks and the shuttle and all that stuff to sort of sit right. So I just, I said, screw it. And I just did a single decoupler and a bunch of struts. Um, so it's not like super, super accurate. Also, there's no hinge on the front, so we can't actually open that cargo bay. We can open the back ones, but they don't actually open to anything. So I'm just going to immediately close those so you can't see what's in there. Right, we're in somewhat of a position to come in and land. Where's the nav ball? There it is. I wish this was the default view so you could see the speed and the nav ball. But they make the weird default view like that. Like I want to see a bit of roof. No thanks. I want to see that speed rating, yo. All right. Back to 270. Alright, we're at the 270 mark. Coming in actually at a really good straight line. Just a perfect approach. We're going to start, sh well, I was going to say we're going to start shedding some uh, height and speed, but. We're actually not doing too bad. 150 meters a second is like 340 miles an hour or something, like just insanely fast. But the height isn't too bad. Coming in at about 2,000 feet or so. She is so cool and commanding. Like, I don't feel like I'm flying a plane, per se. It actually almost feels like uh, the shuttle. You know, when the shuttle comes down and you're basically in more or less of a glide, I feel, oh, we're coming in a little off target. I feel this is a lot less like the, I don't feel like I'm in control. <laughs> I feel like more or less along for the ride. This is very cool. You guys are going to get a kick out of this. Okay, let's get the landing gear down, even though we're going kind of fast and we're pretty far away. Whew. I was smart enough to turn off the gear system so those the gear on the thing didn't come down. That's always annoying. Because someday that'll result in an explosion. It won't just clip inside and be all hunky-dory. trying to fly through the wheels basically to try and get in a nice straight line. I'm using the front wheels like like a crosshair on like an M4A1. <laughs> trying to keep the back wheels centered gives me literally a crosshair. That's one of the things I use to kind of cheat in this game actually. That's one of my secrets. How do you land so good? I use the wheels like a crosshair and I take a peek. I'm sure you guys have noticed I do that a lot. I move the view to kind of this position a lot and then come back to here because I prefer to fly and land from up here but I need to take a peek once in a while and with this guy it's really important because it's so large all right I've put flaps up we've got a button set for the uh, engines to go for reverse This is really clean. Bonk. Little bit heavy on the landing, but I've seen the mirror land, and that's exactly how it lands. <laughs> like, really a good thud on those back wheels. And the back wheels are so well designed on this thing. On, on the real, on the real mirror. The real mirror is just an architectural marvel for how old it is and how well well not necessarily well built well engineered but it's it's just it's good stuff it's good stuff and this thing actually works which is always the case with our uh, videos like this they always work 100 percent every single time 
I think the engine's idling. Yeah, just, just, I think just engine idle was pushing forward a little bit. That's hilarious. Let's shut this down so we can hear ourselves think. All right, so that's a successful, 100% successful Mira mission, test run, cargo conveyance. I hope you guys like this. I hope you share this. I hope you comment, 100% comment. Tell me what you're playing right now, what your thoughts on the videos are, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Guys, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Until next time, peace, love, happy flying.